In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the six weaving stitches I find myself using most often. Let's get started. The first weaving stitch is plain weave or tabby. Those two words are interchangeable. They mean the same thing and it's the most basic form of weaving. It's just over one string, under one string, and then the next row that goes on top of that is the opposite. Plain weave is one of those stitches that I definitely use in every single piece. Even if it's not used throughout the piece where you actually see it, I always use it underneath my fringe. It's just a great way to start off the structure. You can also use it after you've done something like a sumac stitch to make sure that you have enough structure. And then of course, it's also what you would use to create tapestry when you're trying to create images and even just filling in spaces. It's a great basic stitch. Stitch number two is twining. Twining is seriously probably the best stitch for structure. It's going to help even out those warp strings, lock them in. I like to use it at the top and the bottom of a rug mug or a pot holder, as well as a woven wall hanging, because what it does is it allows the strings to get locked in. So when you take it off the loom, it's not going to shift around too much. Now there are two different ways that you can do twining. One of them is with a tapestry needle and one of them is just with your hands. Let's do the one with your hands first. So here's how you can easily do twining just with your hands. We're going to lay out one piece of yarn. If I wanted to do multiple rows of this, I would need a really, really long piece, but I'm going across the loom once in this case. So I'm going to leave this tail the width of my loom. Then I'm gonna grab a second piece. And in this case, the black, and I'm going to go underneath the first warp string. Then I'm going to take the white, bring it over top of where the black is sitting and go underneath the second warp string. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So the black is gonna come over the white and go underneath the next warp string, the white over the black, underneath the next warp string. And I'm going to continue this across the loom and basically what it's doing is it's twining together both the weft and the warp. So remembering that our weft are the horizontal strings and our warp are the vertical strings. As you create this twining stitch, you can sort of tighten it up as you go and allow it to spread out your warp strings and lock around them evenly. Same thing when you get to the end, you can pull on those wefts and even out your warp strings and just really tighten everything up. And this helps spread out the warp strings evenly. It helps lock everything in. When you take this off the loom, the warp strings won't slip around as much as if it were just plain weave. The second way to do twining is with a tapestry needle. So you're going to take a strand of yarn and you're going to weave in one row of plain weave. Leave a nice long tail on one end. And then what you're going to do is we're going to work on all the places where the weft is going over top the warp. So that would be all these little spots right here. And what I'm doing is I'm pointing my needle down. We're going to take our needles, I'm pointing it down and to the right, and I'm going underneath both the warp string and the weft. And that's our first twining stitch. Then I'm skipping the next string, going to the next one after that, where the weft is going over the warp and I'm going down, under and through. So underneath both the warp and the weft. And I like to, when I do the twining this way, I tighten it up on each stitch, skipping the next one and continuing that all the way across. So that is also a twining stitch. It's exactly the same stitch, just done in two different ways. So whichever way feels best for you, do it that way. Stitch number three is sumac. I love doing this with wool roving, but you can also do it with yarn. And so I'm gonna show you how to do both. I'm laying my piece of roving out over top the warp. I have the shorter tail off to the left right now. Then I'm going to take my other tail, working on two strings, the first two strings specifically. I'm gonna go from right to left underneath those two warp strings and then bring that tail back around. And when I work with chunky materials, I like to work on over two, skip two, over two, skip two. So I'm going to skip the next two, then taking these two, again, moving from right to left and bringing that around. What you'll notice is the roving will wanna to start to twist a little bit and that's actually a good thing and it makes your sumac stitch look a little bit smoother. 
So again, let's make sure these aren't twisting. Skipping two, going to the next two. Now here you have a couple of different options. You can grab a second piece of roving and then move in the opposite direction to create that braid effect, or we can turn around. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to turn around. So even though I would normally skip these two strings, I'm gonna go around them. So again, from right to left. Then I'm going to skip these two and go to these two. So you can see that's between where we were. These were the ones we were skipping in the last row. Now we're gonna go around them. But this time I'm going from left to right so that my sumac stitch is going in the opposite direction. Skipping two, taking the next two, going from left to right, skipping two, going around the next two. And this is sumac stitch with wool roving. Next, we're going to do sumac stitch with yarn. So I have a nice long length of yarn. I'm going to match up the two ends and then use the loop on this left side. I'm gonna open up this loop reach under the first two warp strings because I'm using quite a chunky yarn. I'm gonna work on two warp strings at a time. And then I'm gonna pass all this slack underneath from right to left. I'm going to tighten that up. And that is how we can start this sumac. So now I'm opening these two tails up. I'm gonna reach underneath the second two warp strings, pass all the slack through and now we have our first of the sumac stitch. And you wanna make sure that you're always opening up those yarns the same way. We're not going to twist them like this. We're gonna open them up the same direction. So opening them up, reaching under two warp strings, passing the slack through, and then just sort of situating the yarn so it sits nicely. And we can do that all the way across. And what this is doing is it is still weaving two separate rows of sumac stitch, but we're able to do it at the same time. It's obviously a really pretty stitch, just like the sumac with the wool roving, but it's on a smaller scale. We're able to do it a little bit more efficiently by using two strands. So here's what it looks like when it's together. But as you can see, we can pull those apart and it is indeed two separate rows of sumac stitch just woven at the same time. You can also do this with multiple strands of yarn to make for a really unique look. Stitch number four is knotting. And yet again, there are two different ways to do this and I love them both. Knotting provides this really great organic texture. It can look a little bit more linear too, depending on how you do it. But I love that it just, it just brings some really unique texture to your piece. The first way to do knotting is to actually knot on top of the warp strings. So to start out, once again, using a chunkier piece of string. So this is five millimeter cotton string. I'm going to just take that string and tie a knot around two warp strings. I'm leaving a long enough tail that if I wanted to tuck it in later, I could. Then I'm going to bring that string underneath the next two. And this is where it gets a little bit random. You can do it really evenly like I'm about to show you, but you can also get more random with it to give it more of an organic look. So I'm going underneath, then I'm going to, kind of like with sumac stitch, bring the tail end from, from right to left, completely underneath, but I'm gonna leave this loop. I'm going to twist that loop, reach through, bring through the excess, and then tighten up my knot. So then I might do the same thing a couple more times. So bring it under a couple warp strings and then go back around. So from right to left underneath, leaving this nice long loop, giving it a twist, bringing the excess through and tightening it up. Now, then if I want to start turning around and creating an organic shape with this knotting, I'm going to start working in the opposite direction to do that. So I'm going to now bring the yarn from left to right underneath the warp strings. So I'm taking that loop, giving it a twist, feeding the tail through, and then carefully tightening up that knot. Again, paying attention to not letting my warp strings get too twisted on me. So now in this case, I would probably go underneath this previous, there's a knot here, so I'm gonna go underneath these warp strings. And now I'm gonna go around these two, creating that loop, giving it a twist, feeding through the excess. I just did two rows that are very linear, but you can start getting a little bit more organic with it. So even though I did a knot here, I'm gonna do another one here. And then I might, you know, start going fairly evenly again underneath to 
and then around two. Now I'm moving in the opposite direction again. And this is really loose right here, but that's honestly kind of okay. It doesn't, this knotting doesn't have to be perfect. It looks really great and like I said, organic. So you can play around with it a bit and not have to be super precise about it. And what I like about the texture of it is it really looks quite random, which is something that can be hard to achieve when weaving because we're usually doing things that are pretty linear. But I like that this texture gives all these different directions that the string is moving in. So I'm going to take a nice long piece of this yarn and I'm going to double it up. From there, all I'm going to do is start putting knots into this piece. So using an overhand knot and knotting it up like so and you can do these knots as close together or as far apart as you want you can make it really random the more random it is on the actual strand the more random it'll show up when you weave it in and the more strands you use the chunkier it'll get which will create more emphasized texture or you can do it a little bit more subtle like i am with just a couple of strands of chunky yarn now that we have our piece of knotted together yarn we're going to weave it in if you've used some really small thin pieces of yarn you can weave this in over one under one just regular plain weave but if you've chosen something chunky like i have you're going to want to go over to under two to give enough space for those chunky knots and then i like to make sure that the knots are sitting in a place where they're going over top the warp string so that the knots sit out to the front of the piece instead of to the back so you can see the beautiful texture that this provides, kind of similar to the other style of knotting. And it's nice and random, if, especially if you've spread out those knots more randomly and then where they end up when you actually weave them in is also random. I love this texture. I think it's really pretty. And again, giving that organic feel. Stitch number five is modified plain weave loops. I don't have an official name for this. I don't know if there is one, but here's how it goes. I'm gonna take a piece of roving. This is about a half width, but you can use a full width as well. I'm going to weave it in over two, under two, since it's nice and chunky. I'm gonna leave myself a tail at one end, and then everywhere that the roving is going over top the warp strings, I'm gonna pull up a little bit of a loop. So it creates this really fun texture. And then I can go back the other direction. So again, over two, under two, or under two, over two. And once again, everywhere it's going over top the warp strings, I'm gonna pull up a loop. This is one of those stitches that you'll definitely want probably some plain weave both before and after it so that it locks it into place, but it creates really pretty texture I love this one and I find myself using it all the time. It's like little bubbles. Maybe it should be called the bubble stitch. Stitch number six is loops. I used to call these Raya loops, but then I realized I think they're actually slip knot loops and Raya loops is a different thing. So I'm gonna show you how to do slip knot loops. What I love about these loops is you can work off of your ball of yarn. You don't need to cut the string. So it's just continuous, which is really nice. I'm going to start out with a few rows of plain weave just so we have a solid base for underneath the loops. Then I'm literally just going to take the strand of yarn off of a ball. And the first thing we're gonna do is tie a knot. So just like we started the knotting, I'm going to tie a knot straight onto the warp like this. This tail can then be tucked in later. And this is how we do slip knot loops or raya loops, call them what you want. I'm going to take the yarn, pass it from right to left underneath, then we're creating a loop. So this is very similar to the knotting technique. So we're passing it underneath, creating a loop. Then we're gonna pass this yarn through the loop and we're gonna use that loop and tighten it to whatever length you want. So you can pull it shorter, you can pull it longer. In this case, I'm gonna make it nice and short. And then you're just gonna continue that process. So again, when I'm working this direction, I'm passing the yarn from right to left, creating a loop, passing the other yarn through, and then tightening up that slip knot. And again, creating whatever length you want. So you can make them all a really even length. You can make them random. And this is going to create really beautiful loopy texture. If you're using a thicker yarn than I am, you might want to 
skip a string or two on your way. And then at any point, you can just turn around and start moving back the other direction. And the nice thing about these slip knots is you don't need to tie them in the opposite direction. I just basically just start moving this way and I continue wrapping the same way that I was before. Now, one thing about this, because it is a slip knot, you can just pull the loops apart. So we do need to end this off with a knot so that doesn't happen. And just like a lot of the other stitches we've done, this one would also benefit from some plain weave or twining after you do it so that it wants to kind of all stick together nice and tightly. And you can kind of almost like you would with your hair to sort of mess it up a little bit. You can mess up the, the loops a little bit so that they look more not sitting so perfectly. Then to end it, what you're gonna do is leave a nice long tail. And what I like to do is just tie another knot around the string. So I just went under, I'm gonna tie a knot. So now if this tail gets pulled on, it's not gonna undo those loops. So it's just kind of like a precautionary knot, just in case when you're tucking it in, you're pulling on it and it wants to undo the other loops. Let me know in the comments below which of these stitches is your favorite, which one you find yourself going back to over and over again. Click right here for our full stitch library playlist.